This video covers the content of the SAP Cloud Platform Workflow Virtual Event, content which is available on GitHub, and it specifically covers the content for exercise five, creating, deploying, and instantiating a simple workflow. In this exercise, we're going to create a new workflow project in the SAP Business Application Studio, and we'll understand what a workflow, workflow project looks like and what components it contains. We're then going to build and deploy that project to the cloud and effectively thereby deploy the workflow definition to the cloud. We're then going to have a look at that workflow definition using the tools we installed previously on a previous exercise. And we're going to create an instance of that workflow definition. After that, we'll examine the workflow instance, and then finally, we'll create one more workflow instance with different data. So let's get started. The first thing we need to do is to reopen, if we don't have it open already, reopen our App Studio workflow dev space, uh, and we can use the bookmark that we created previously. If you're just for some reason presented with a blank screen when you go to this URL, just remove the hash path to go to the overview of your dev spaces. And it may be that your dev space is in a stopped state where you can actually start it again and then just jump straight into it. So the last time we created a project in a previous exercise, we dragged a directory from our local file system into the Explorer, and it was the BPM Services FLP directory. This time, we're going to use a different approach to creating a new project, and we're going to use a Yeoman wizard. It's a command line tool, so we need to open a terminal. So it's worth just taking a moment to understand exactly what a workflow project looks like generally and specifically what the workflow project that we're going to create in this exercise will look like. We're creating a workflow project so that we can use graphical tools in the App Studio to define our workflow definition. But that workflow definition lives within a so-called workflow module. And that workflow module is a module that's defined as part of an MTA, a multi-target application. So from previous exercises, we'll be generally familiar with MTAs. So bear that in mind as we go through to define our workflow project. So we're going to use Yeoman as the project generator. So before we do anything else, let's just collapse that whole directory structure so we can see what appears. And at the command prompt, we're gonna enter the yo command to invoke the project generator and as you can see here we get a little bit of a, a menu and what we want to do is generate first of all the outermost shell as it were the multi-target application so as you can see as described here we want to choose the basic multi-target application option and i'm moving up and down here with my arrow keys the project name we should enter is order flow. And that is it as far as Yeoman's work to generate us a basic multi-target application. You can see here, we've got a, a new directory order flow named after the project. In there, we have a git ignore file. But most importantly, we have an mta.yaml file, which currently is almost empty. It has an ID, again, reflecting the project name, but there's nothing in it. There are no modules defined and no resources defined upon which you know, any modules may rely. So now we want to create the inner parts of the project, a workflow module with a workflow definition. So we're now here. So still within the terminal, we want to now move into this order flow directory. Notice here, our prompt tells us which directory we're in. We can actually see that with 
PWD. And if I list the contents of that location where we are now, we can see that we have the BPM services directory, which is that one. And we have the order flow directory, which is that one. So I'm going to clear the screen with control L and I'm going to change directory into the order flow directory. Now within there, that's where we want to create the workflow module containing the workflow definition. So we invoke yo again, and this time we want to choose the workflow workflow module. The name of the module specify order process with camel casing. The name of the workflow, call it the same name, but all lowercase. And we can leave the description of the workflow blank. Now we'll get a message saying that there already is a, an MTA YAML. Do we want to overwrite that? And yes, we do in this case. Now, just a few notes. The module name is order process with capital O and capital P and the workflow name is a lowercase version of that. We could have chosen this exactly the same name, but just to emphasize the fact that there's a difference between the workflow definition and the workflow module it lives within, we've chosen different names. In fact, a workflow module can have one or more workflow definitions inside it. Just as, of course, an MTA can have one or more modules inside it. Okay. So now we can see that our workflow module has been created, order process within order flow. And if we have a look inside there, we see a number of directories that represent the different possible artifacts that belong to any given set of workflow definitions. The workflow definition itself, the order process workflow that we've asked Yeoman to create for us, is in, a, is in a directory called workflows, and that's here, order process.workflow, and it's been automatically opened for us in the App Studio here. And that's what we can see in the screenshot. Before we do anything with this particular workflow definition, let's just have a look at the mta.yaml file now. Let's just close this terminal to make some more space for ourselves. So before we run Yeoman for a second time here, to create the order process workflow module, we just had these three lines in the mta.yaml. And now we have a single module called order process, and we've got a single resource called workflow underscore mta. So expanding those again, we can stare at this for a second to understand the relationship between the module and the resources, and also to understand what this module actually represents and what the resource represents. There's a little bit of editing involved, partly because it's necessary, but partly because it helps us understand the contents of the mta.yaml a little bit better. Notice that this is a, a content deployment type module, and it requires a resource called workflow underscore MTA. This name here refers to the resource of the same name within the resources section. And this workflow MTA resource here describes the requirement for an instance of the workflow service. In particular, an instance of the workflow service following the standard plan. Within our trial account, we can see if we open up a new tab, and have a look at the service instances, we can see we already have a workflow instance called default underscore workflow, and it's with the light plan, because within the trial account, we have access to a light plan. So what we need to do, as described in the last part of this step one, is modify some of the content here. Because first of all, our workflow instance exists 
And secondly, it's called default underscore workflow. So we can modify the contents of the MTA YAML to reflect that. The first modification is that we want to change managed service to existing service. Secondly, because we're not asking the deployment to trigger the creation of a workflow instance, we don't need the service plan and service parameters. But what we do need is the service name. And we can set that to default workflow. This means that this resource definition will point to an existing instance of this name, default workflow. Instead of having this parameter here, we could have changed the name here and here to say default underscore workflow. That also works. I'm going to save that YAML file. And now it's time to move to step two where we can build the project and deploy it to the cloud. We've got to build and deploy it now, even though the workflow definition doesn't really do very much at all. It just starts and then ends, but that's fine for now. So we can use the context menu like we did in the previous exercise on the MTA YAML file and choose build MTA. Just as before, we get a task window down at the bottom showing us the execution of what we've just asked for. And it's the same MBT tool that's been used. As you can see in this case, there's only one module and it's quite a simple module and the build has completed already. So now it's time to deploy the file that's just been built. Just like in a previous exercise, we know to look inside this newly created MTA archives directory and we'll see the order flow 001.mtar. We can again use the context menu to deploy that archive. Now, just like here, if you've taken a break and, and uh, maybe come back to this a day later, you may get a message saying, could not get access token, authentication has expired. So we can open the terminal and log back in, re-authenticate with the API endpoint of the Cloud Foundry organization that's connected to our sub-account. So I'll do that now. Okay, I'm now logged back in. So let's try that deployment again. We switch back automatically to the deploy MTA archive task window, and we can follow that deployment as it goes along. And the deployment has already completed. It's quite a simple deployment. It's just a deployment of content, that content being the definition of the workflow. So now it's time to have a look at the workflow definition in step three, and also create an instance of it. So now we need to jump to the tools that we've previously deployed in an earlier exercise. So I'm going to move to this other tab here where we've got our service instances, open up the navigation menu on the left hand side, move to the applications. And of course, I can just jump straight there with the trial sub account home bookmark that we've already got together. And I'm going to use the application route to take me to the Fury Launchpad site to get to the tiles, the workflow tiles, where I can see the definitions and also eventually the instances of the workflows. So I'm going to choose the monitor workflow, workflow definitions tile. And I can see that we have a workflow definition or the process. Notice that the version is version one. The ID is exactly the same as the name of the workflow definition here in lowercase that we specified when we ran the Yeoman generator. And we can use the start new instance button to start a new instance. Now there's some default test data. We can use that. And I'm going to use the start new instance button. Now this default data, notice it's JSON, 
that will be saved into the context of the workflow instance. So we can see there's a message saying that the workflow instance has started. Now, unless something's gone wrong, that workflow instance has probably all already ended as well. So let's switch to looking at the workflow instance using the show instances button. As we can see, the workflow instances list is empty, but that's because there's a default filter set up only to show us workflow instances that are ongoing. Completed and cancelled workflows are not shown. So we'll select all the different statuses and we can see there that we have a completed workflow instance of our order process workflow definition. It's worth taking a few moments to stare at this, have a look around. In any given display of a workflow instance, you'll see four main areas. We'll see the general workflow information, and we can jump if we wanted to, to the definition of the, uh, of the workflow with this link here. We can see the version of the definition that this instance relates to. So this is an instance of version one of the order process workflow definition. We see that the instance has a unique ID. It was started by me just now. There are no errors in this particular case. There was not much to go wrong in this workflow definition. The workflow context is the data that's associated with any given workflow instance. And this data, as you can recognize, is the data that was specified when we started this particular workflow instance. And at the bottom, we can see the execution log. Reading from the bottom up, the workflow was started and then the workflow completed successfully. So now, just before the end of this exercise, let's create another workflow instance, but with different data. So we can go to the workflow information section, navigate straight back to the workflow definition with this link here. You start new instance again, and instead of this default book related information, we can use this bit of JSON here, which represents a request. This is just any string, but it represents effectively a request for a given product with this ID. This is a product from our OData service that we examined in a previous exercise and it has a quantity value as well. Nothing much is different, but let's have a look at that instance too. Really, the only difference is that the workflow context now contains what we specified when we started that workflow instance. So that's it for this exercise. We've gone through the process of bringing workflow definition from our App Studio inside a workflow module, inside an MTA. We've built that MTA, we've deployed it to the cloud platform, and then we've gone to our Fury Launchpad site and used the workflow tools that we've previously deployed to look at that definition and create instances of it. Thanks for watching.